So tribes begin to send people to the mountains to have visions, to try to figure out how they could survive. At that time, there was 100,000 cities in the Mississippi Valley alone called the Mound Civilization. Cities built on great mounds. Those mounds are still there. If you ever drive through Ohio or the Mississippi Valley, they're tourist attractions now. There was 100,000 cities of native people. And they were wondering how they could survive. And they began to try to learn to live off the land because they knew a hard time was going to come. They begin to send people to have visions to see how we could survive this time. People came on the East Coast and they went across this land to the East and we were told in the prophecies that we should try to remind all the people that would come here of the sacredness of all things. And if we could do that, there would be peace on Earth. But if we did not do that, when the roads went clear from East to West, and when the other races or colors of the earth had walked clear across this land, if by that time we had not come together as a human family, the great spirit would grab the earth with his hand and shake it. And so if you read the treaty negotiations from Red Jacket of the Six Nations on the east coast of this land, clear to Chief Joseph and Chief Seattle on the west coast of this land, they all said the same thing. Chief Joseph said, I, I accord you the right and I hope that you accord me the right to live in this land. We always were trying to live together. But instead of living together, you all know there was separation, there was segregation. They separated the races, they separated the, the Indians, and they separated the blacks. In the state of Washington, it was against the law for an Asian to marry a white person. Up until not too long ago, there was separation. So when they got to the west coast of this land, the elders that were aware of many of these prophecies, and I should say that I know that each of every one of you from your tribal backgrounds have your own prophecies, and I'm probably not the most deserving person to be speaking, but and there is going to be a time, I think, on the agenda for other people to share, and I hope that you open up and do share. They, when they got to the west coast of this land, they said they would then begin to build a black ribbon, and on this black ribbon they would move a bug. And when you begin to see this bug moving on the land, that was a sign for the first shaking of the earth. And this first shaking of the earth would be so violent that this bug would be shaken off the earth into the air, and it would begin to move and fly in the air. And by the end of this shaking, this bug would be in the air around the world. And behind it would be a trail of dirt. And eventually, the whole sky of the entire earth would become dirty from these trails of dirt. And this would cause many diseases that would get more and more complicated. So the bug moving on the land, of course, it's easy to see now. In 1908, the Model T Ford was mass produced for the first time. So the elders knew the first shaking of the earth was about to come about. That's the First World War. In the First World War, the airplane came into wide usage for the first time. That was the bug moving into the sky. And so then they knew that something very important would happen. There would be an attempt to make peace on earth on the west coast of this land, and so the elders begin to watch for this. And they begin to hear that there was going to be a League of Nations in San Francisco. So the elders gathered in Arizona around 1920 or so, and they wrote a letter to Woodrow Wilson, and they asked if Indian people could be included in the League of Nations. At that time, the United States Supreme Court had held that a reservation is a separate and semi-sovereign nation, not a part of the United States, but protected by it. And this was a concern because people didn't want the reservations to become more and more separate. They didn't want them to be considered nations. So they did not write back, and the Native people were left out of the League of Nations. So that circle was incomplete. In the League of Nations circle, there was the southern door, the yellow people. There was the western door, the black people. There was the northern door, the white people. But the eastern door was not attended. And the elders knew that peace would not come on earth until the circle of humanity is complete. Until all the four colors set in the circle and share their teachings, then peace will come on earth. So they knew things would happen. Things would speed up a little bit. There would be a cobweb built around the earth, and people would talk across this cobweb. When this talking cobweb, the telephone, was built around the earth, 
A sign of life would appear in the east, but it would tilt and bring death. It would come with the sun. But the sun itself would rise one day, not in the east, but in the west. So the elders said, when you see the sun rising in the west, and you see the sign of life reversed and tilted in the east, you know that the great death is to come upon the earth. And now the great spirit will grab the earth again with his hand and shake it. And this shaking will be worse than the first. So the sign of life reversed and tilted. They called that the swastika. And the sun rising in the west was the rising sun of Japan. These two symbols are carved in stone in Arizona. When the elders seen these two flags, these were the signs that the earth was to be shaken again. And the worst misuse of the guardianship of fire is called the gourd of ashes. They said a gourd of ashes will fall from the air. It will make the people like blades of grass and prairie fire. And things will not grow for many seasons. I saw on TV not too long ago they were talking about the atomic bomb, the gourd of ashes. They said it was the best kept secret in the history of the United States. The elders wanted to speak about it in 1920 at the League of Nations. They would have spoken of it and foretold its coming if they could have entered into the League of Nations. The elders tried to contact President Roosevelt and ask him not to use the Gordon of Ashes because it would have great effects upon the earth and eventually cause an even greater destruction in the third shaking of the earth, the Third World War. But I'll get to that in a few minutes. So they knew that after the second shaking of the earth and they saw the Gordon of Ashes fall from the sky, they knew then they would be trying to make peace on the other side of this land. And because the peace attempt on the west coast had failed, they would build a special house on the east coast of this turtle island, North America. And all the nations and the peoples would come to this house, and it would be called the House of Micah. It would shine like the Micah on the desert shines. So the elders began to see they were building the United Nations made out of glass that reflects like the Micah on the desert. So they knew that this is the House of Micah, and all the peoples of the earth should go to it. So they met and talked about this. They said that in 1920s they had written and they had not been responded to. So this time they said, we better go to the front door of the house of Micah because things might get a lot worse. So elders representing a number of tribes, I believe, drove to New York City. When the United Nations opened, they went to the front door of the house of Micah. And they said these words, we represent the indigenous people of North America and we wish to address the nations of the earth. And they said, we're going to give you four days to consider whether or not we will be allowed to speak. And they retreated to one of the Six Nations Reserves in New York State. The Six Nations Reserves are the keepers of the great law of peace of the prophet that appeared here in North America, Daganawida. And this great law of peace is still recited. It takes four days between sunrise and noon each year in Indian by memory. It's recited about this time of year. Four days later, they came back. And I believe the nations of the earth, they heard that the Indians had come to the door. And they voted to let the Indians in. They wanted to hear what they had to say. But the United, Nation, the United States is one of five nations and the United Nations with a veto power and still they were concerned because this time the native sovereignty was even stronger. And I believe they vetoed the entrance of the native people. So then they knew other things would happen on the earth and the United Nations would not bring peace on earth but there would be continuing and deepening confusion and that the little wars would get worse. <coughs> So they retreated to the Six Nations Reserve and they talked about this and they said the time is really getting close now, 1949. They said we're going to divide the United States into four sections and each year we're going to have a gathering and we're going to call these the White Ritz of Peace Gatherings. They begin to have these around 1950. And they authorized certain men to speak in English for the first time about these prophecies. One that I used to listen to many times over and over was Thomas Benyaka. He was a Hopi. He is a Hopi man. I believe he's still living. Who was authorized to speak in English about.